Right, so hypothetical scenario. You've uh, ordered your Pico scope. It came in the mail. And I uh, know you're faced with actually taking your first measurements. Let's make the assumption you're going to use it on your uh, car, as I do for the most part. Um, this is the model I have. The cheapest Pico scope known to mankind, I think. The uh, 2204 Alpha, or A. And um, great rig, worth every penny. Um, I think I paid maybe about $160 Canadian. I ordered it right from uh, Pico Tech, um, the American uh, location. I think it's in Texas somewhere, not that that matters. But um, what a wreck. So again, you've got it home. A wee bit intimidated as I was. How, how am I going to use this? I don't pretend to be a lab tech. Very little uh, um, experience with respect to scopes. So you've got your laptop, you've got it booted up. Let's assume that you've already downloaded the actual uh, Pico uh, software. So let's get the rig hooked up. St as straightforward as straightforward can be, USB into the computer. It's the little jack on the back of the rig, straightforward. And you'll notice the LED will illuminate on the on the face of the uh, Pico scope itself. Whoops! Let's try and get it in in frame. <laughs> That'll be a lot better. Uh, so, yeah, a little LED on the face of the Pico scope itself. Um, the default trace is set up for channel one. What's actually on the face of it? Channel one, channel A, and channel B. It's only a two scope, uh, two channel scope, and uh, the arbitrary waveform generator. Uh, signal generator essentially so don't confuse this as a as an input this is really an output right of course so uh the default color scheme is actually blue for um, channel a so i've actually put a little blue ring on here just to keep it simple so we'll keep it as simple as possible simply one channel b and c on the face of the rig for demonstration purposes i have just a little 12 volt battery here that you can see that we'll actually use for measurement purposes. So that's it, just the basic probe. And we're not gonna to touch anything. So let's just start up the software. Double click on the Pico icon itself. <clears throat> this is the variant of the software that I actually have installed. You'll hear what sounds like a couple of relays actually inside the Pico scope itself. So, let me get this. There's a little uh, feedback window that pops up. Close it. Let me full size this so you can actually see what we're doing. So, there's the trace on the screen itself. Get this in the frame properly so you can see. Uh, so, what do you need to know? Um, let's. You look at these parameters on the face on the top portion of the uh the software the way it presents and i don't know it's pretty intimidating to me you think what is all this stuff but let's say you're the type who doesn't believe in reading manuals <laughs> not that i'm that type but uh let's say you're that type and you just go for it will it work well let's find out so all i'm doing is i'm gonna hook up my probe here so Alligator clip to the to the negative. Again, this is a 12 volt battery, so let's just assume it's similar to working on your car and see what kind of results we get on screen. So there we have it. So without touching anything, anything at all, we already have a trace that actually makes sense on screen. So I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible so I don't want to bore you. So the channel A. This is channel A that we're actually operating in, we're hooked up on. It defaults to one time. Make sure that on the on your probe itself, there's a selection between 10 times and one time. Make sure it's selected properly. And there's a running, uh, there's a play and a stop button here. And you can see that everything else is actually set to the defaults. Uh, the sampling rate is set to the default. The time base is set to the default. Not really that much of an issue when you're actually dealing with uh, 
not as much of an issue when you're dealing with just straight DC, 12 volts DC in our case, but you can see on the uh, the voltage scale is automatically set up for us. It's actually auto auto scaled it, and you can see that we're actually reading just below 12 volts there. So let me lift the let me lift the ground lead here for just a second. You can see it goes back, and the scale is actually now reading 50 millivolts. So with it touching the thing. The scope has actually automatically set itself up. You can see you get the over voltage symbol there for just a second. Hang on a sec, let me get it right. Let me get the terminology right. Channel over range momentarily, the exclamation point, and then it actually sets itself up automatically. So I'm gonna do a number of these videos, but let's leave this as the first one. So if you don't know a thing, a single thing about operating a scope, this has already configured itself in a useful manner for you. Again, I'm talking strictly about taking a measurement from your vehicle, for example. Um, and when I say vehicle, let's talk about the traditional 12 volt system. Um, I don't really see how you can go wrong, to be honest. Maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. And if I am, sing out in the comments by all means. I'd, I'd like to hear it. But it seems like pretty... Uh, pretty well designed that you can literally use this right out the box knowing very very little didn't read a thing in the manual and it's still extremely useful so i'm going to leave that at this i'm going to leave it at that for now because i have a bad habit of making these things too long and we'll do a number of uh of these um to show you some basic functions so what we're going to cover in the future is um the actual channel the scaling, the coupling, um, the um, the mode of operation with respect to running or stopped, and how you can actually step back through the uh, the memory buffer and step back 32 frames to see what's actually happening. But for now, let's leave it at that. Fantastic tool, right out of the box. Didn't read a thing. Simple, easy, pretty much. Um, I don't want to call it idiot proof because I'm sure there's a way you can bugger it, but uh, extremely useful, great design, very useful and readable software, it kind of intuitive to a degree. Some of the symbology is a wee bit um, intimidating, I would say. It was to me at least when I first looked at it, I thought, holy lift, and I'm going to have to read this manual for a month. Well, I think this proves the point that you don't really need it, not for a month, not for one second, and you can actually start using this tool right out of the box again with respect to using it on a 12 volt uh system right in a traditional automotive setup okay let's leave it at that for now cheers